Shalom. Kol Halayla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the, to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, sharing a vision. <clears throat> so I believe this was last Thursday morning. I had a vision of a bear trying to attack me. And out of nowhere, a lion jumped out. And the dream was kind of bizarre. And I'm aware if we're not careful, these visions and dreams can bug us out. But anyway, the lion lifted up a rod and smote the bear. But at first, I was confronted by the bear alone. <clears throat> and the lion showed up with a rod in his hand. And I want to leave this open as well for any brothers to offer any, any thoughts, spiritual thoughts, on what this may can represent. But nevertheless, I'll go into it as best I can. <coughs> so the lion came out of nowhere and smote the bear with a rod, which was very weird. So at first I was not going to go into this, but nevertheless, this these images popped back up from the visions that I had Thursday morning prior to waking up, last Thursday morning. And today's date is the 7th of March. So I'm going to go into this, <clears throat> go here first. So that lion, what I believe, through the spirit, let's see here, let's go to Jeremiah 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 5. Declare ye in Judah, and publish in Jerusalem, and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together, and say, Assemble yourselves, and let us go into the defense cities. Set up the standard toward Zion, Retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. And the context of this is ancient Babylon of Judah being judged. Let's go to verse 7. The lion is come up from his thicket. And the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He is gone forth from his place to make the land desolate. And thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. So I believe this vision, it tells a story of what's going to occur in the latter days, which is what we're living in now. So that lion from the thicket represents the lion of the tribe of Judah, Yahawashai. Let's go to Numbers 24. <coughs> the book of Numbers, chapter 24. Let's go to verse 8. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. 
high energy concentrated laser beam fire from the great father ship and the smaller vessels, the so-called UFOs. Here's the key point. Numbers 24, verse 9. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that bless thee, and curse is he that curseth thee. So this is the vision from Balaam, and Balak, or Balak, had asked Balaam to curse the Israelites, Jacob. So we have a savior through Yahawashai, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So Israel cannot be cursed on this side. And when I say Israel, I'm talking about the Israel of the Most High, the elect. Let's read this again. Numbers 24, verse 9. <clears throat> he couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and curse is he that curseth thee. So all these nations are going to get their judgment. They're going to be smitten by the lion of Judah. So we are able to navigate through the scriptures because the lion of the tribe of Judah have prevailed to open the books. <clears throat> Let's go to Revelation 5. Let's go to verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written, and on the backside sealed with the seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. So who can crack the code of understanding and decipher the mysteries of the kingdom? Verse 3, And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. So these seals are cracked wide open. This is why we see prophets on the five major continent areas prophesying in the last days. So the comforter is spreading across the earth, across the Lord's men. So the lion of the tribe of Judah have prevailed to open the book. So we have the victory. It's what I think that lion represented. That smote the bear. And Russia is being raised up in these last days to come and take a spoil. The Israelites. And we know that Russia and its alliance with Iran, Kazakhstan, Kurdistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, all those surrounding territories are remnants of the ancient Medo-Persian alliance. So we're seeing some semblance of that alliance come back together in these last days. So that bear is Russia and its allies. See, let's go here first. 
Daniel 7. Let's go to verse. Book of Daniel, chapter 7. Verse 5. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. So this is describing the ancient Medo-Persian empire or alliance, assembly of nations. And the Persians became greater than the Medes. So now we see a regenerated assembly of nations under the bear, Russia. So in the last days, they're going to attempt to take a spoil. The remnant that are gathered out of many nations. <clears throat> Let's go here at Ezekiel 38. Start at the top first. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So when you look at the Hebrew word chief prince Rudasha chief prince Rudasha <clears throat> see and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army horses and horsemen all of them clothed with all sorts of armor even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, which is Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Armored troops. Gomer, which is Turkey, and some parts of Syria. Gomer and all his bands the house of Togarmar of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. The surrounding territories as well that's being joined back unto Russia. So the Lord has put hooks in the jaws of Russia to try to reestablish a footprint as large as the former Soviet Union or Soviet bloc nations. Let's get to the key point. See, let's go to verse <clears throat> 9. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. So Russia is going to attempt to take the lambs of the Lord, and it's going to try to capitalize off of the daughter of Babylon being broken and taken. 
So Russia marks the end of the age of Edom, the reign of terror on the earth. <clears throat> so Yahweh Shai is going to smite the nations. And when you look at the nations coming from the east, they're led by Russia. Revelation 19, verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. These are the so-called chariots of the Lord. Verse 15. So that rod I saw, he smote the nations, which is going to be led by Russia, the bear. Revelation 19, verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. See? So he smote the bear with a large stick or rod in the vision. <clears throat> See here, there's something else I wanted to get. See, let's go to verse 16. So they are attempting to take the lambs of the Lord. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. And I will bring them. See, this, this is beautiful. So these visions are pouring out on many people in these last days. Let's read that again. Ezekiel 38 and 16. Let's go to verse 15. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. So right now the BRICS nations are a large alliance of Eastern Bloc nations. And Russia is a guard unto them. And we know Russia represents the mother bear. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. And I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me and I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, Are thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them. So he said that Russia would do this and try to come and take a spoil. But the Lord is going to smite the bear with fire. Or to Ezekiel 38, verse 21. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself, and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. All praises to Yahweh Hashem. Yahweh Shai. So that vision, what I believe through the Spirit, represents Yahweh Shai smiting 
and the nations that are being led by Gog and Magog, an assembly of nations. When I first had the dream, I just really didn't know what was going on, and I, I called up uh, Brother Gambar Dama, and we discussed it and agreed on several of the points that were made. Let's go here, Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So Rome emerging up out of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Edom, Rome. Let's go to verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So we know that the Edomites came into power, into power under Alexander the Greek, the leopard. So we just read the start and finish. So they started under Alexander the Greek. And the bear, Russia, Gog and Magog, is going to clash with the ten horns, NATO and the European Union, in the latter days that we read in Ezekiel. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So they are ruling under great firepower, technology, signs, wonders, miracles that we can read about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So they are the proverbial flame-breathing dragon, NATO, the European Union, and there is an assembly of United Nations following them. So you have a great sword and great fire power. But the key point is the bear is going to clash with NATO and the European Union, which marks the end of their kingdom. Satan being divided against itself, the east against the west, the left against the right, democratic against republican. So this is marking the end of the age of Edom. We read all that. And we read that. Let's read this again. Revelation 19, verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God and he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords Yahawashai So he is the lion of the tribe of Judah and the root and offspring of David. <clears throat> so hopefully this lesson has been edifying. I tried to make it short and to the point and not get long-winded. 
which breath I don't have tonight. So hopefully it has been an edifying lesson. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kadash, Thumb. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Calm your Shirala and abide the ball. What do you got next, Lord willing? Shalom.